You know, I've been pleasantly surprised by the MCU's recent onslaught of series that have been coming out on Disney+. Plus. From WandaVision's exploration of grief through the lens of classic sitcoms, to Loki's Doctor Who-like adventures through the Marvel Cinematic Multiverse, there have been some pretty fun ideas. But now, we've got something far more grounded than Celestials and Multiversal Spider-Man. A guy with a bow and arrow, going up against the tracksuit gang that tends to say the word bro a lot. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Science Of, where I take a look at the science behind your favourite game shows and more. Today we're jumping back into the MCU to take a look at the science behind Marvel's arrow-slinging hero Hawkeye. This means that we're going to be taking a look at the science behind his trick arrows, of which there are many in both the comics and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to take a look at a few of my favourites to see how they could work in a real-world situation. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, then please remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And then, if you want to see some of my other videos, I've also covered the Marvel Universe in the past, looking at if Peter Parker's powers could come from a retro virus carrying spider, and exactly how similar Miles Morales and Peter Parker's powers are to that of an actual spider. As well as that, tell me down below what your favourite trick hour is from the Hawkeye series so far. Episode 3 just released on Disney+, Plus, so there are a lot of options to choose from. But anyway, that's all from me for now, let's get into the science of Hawkeye. The Hawkeye series is set after Avengers Endgame, and will act as the 8th instalment of Marvel's 4th phase of movies, shows, and with any luck, a range of Avengers-based musicals. When it comes to the MCU's depiction of Hawkeye, we've got a surprising amount of development given his appearances were significantly limited in contrast to other members of the superhero team. And whilst Hawkeye has never had any superhuman powers, similar to DC's Green Arrow, he's always had a large variety of customised trick arrows that can be used in a wide range of situations. And whilst they haven't been shown in the series as of the first two episodes, the Hawkeye trailers and MCU have shown off a pretty decent selection of trick arrows to analyse. What we're going to do today is to take a look at a few of the more interesting arrows to see how they could work in the real world. And we're not just limiting this to the MCU either, so let's dive into the comics first and have a look at some of the more interesting trick arrows. When it comes to the Marvel comics, we naturally find a wide variety of visually interesting and effective trick arrows used by Hawkeye, with an arrow for almost any situation. It's worth noting that there are no limitations in comics other than what the artist and writer can come up with. A few of these arrows were illustrated in the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, which showcased a few of my favourites including the suction tip arrow, which is basically a fancy version of those arrows provided with toy bows, and the net arrow, which releases an 8 metre wide net that fits snugly into a little pressurised canister. But for the purpose of this video, let's take a look at an arrow that has no kind of MCU counterpart. Let's take a look at the putty arrow. This water balloon tipped arrow is one of Hawkeye's non-lethal trick arrows and can be used to disable or immobilise the target by drenching them in some kind of rubber-like liquid that sticks them to the ground. This arrow has been used against a ton of villains in the comics including Ultron and even Deadpool. It was even used in the Hawkeye miniseries that the MCU show is meant to be based on so who knows, we actually might get to see it as the show goes on. In order to find an adhesive similar to this, we don't necessarily need to look that far. As we can see from the comic, this stuff is very viscous, sticking to its target and forming almost venom-like webbing around them. The term putty typically refers to some kind of soft malleable paste that hardens after being applied to a surface. But this doesn't exactly look like what Hawkeye's got inside of these arrows. From the comics, it looks like whatever's in these arrows is definitely a non-Newtonian fluid, like the ones we covered in the Science of Portal. Basically, what Hawkeye's putting together with this arrow is large-scale flypaper. The webbing-like effect seen in the comics can be observed with several types of glue used in rat trap boards. These boards typically have a layer of glue as small as 3 sixteenths of an inch deep, and these are able to trap mice, rats and other small rodents. These glues normally contain a mixture of linseed oil and polyurethane derivatives. The only problem with these glues is that they're way too viscous to disperse on impact like we see in the comics. They're what is known as a quasi-solid, but this can be easily fixed with the application of heat. So that's an example of a comic exclusive arrow, but what about some of the MCU trick arrows? When it comes to the MCU, Hawkeye has been shown to use more typical arrows rather than some of the more fantastical arrows that have been shown in the comics. 
The most common type of arrow that we see throughout the series are normal arrows, simple carbon fibre tubes that are able to deal damage to robots and interdimensional demons. Following these normal arrows, Hawkeye has some which, whilst not necessarily as interesting as comic arrows, are specialised for covert operations, such as the stun arrow that's able to knock enemies unconscious. Following these we have the EMP arrows that release an electromagnetic pulse that can short circuit any electrical device it hits. Now normally an electromagnetic pulse will be produced from nuclear detonation. When a warhead explodes it will release a large amount of gamma rays. These are photons that contain high levels of energy. These photons travel through the air, stripping it of electrons as they zoom past, ionising the air molecules. Now that the air is ionised, it can act as a conductor of electricity. This means that those electrons stripped and energised by the gamma rays are free to move around the air in an electrical circuit. Any change in this current will produce radio waves, and as the current is going from nothing to incredibly high in a short period of time, this means that a large portion of the atmosphere will be a huge radio transmitter. The produced radio waves are able to induce currents in conductive materials, and this means that when these waves hit something metal, the wires of a PC for instance, they produce intense power surges. This doesn't happen all in one pulse though. The main pulse is followed by secondary ones, caused by the release of neutrons which run into things causing more gamma rays, and this in turn releases more electrons, leading to the same kind of pulse, but much weaker. Now as mentioned earlier, this kind of EMP relies a big old nuclear warhead to detonate, and I don't think Hawkeye has any of those inside of those big old D12s he strapped to his arrowheads. So what other ways can an EMP be produced? Well, Hawkeye could always be using an E-bomb or electromagnetic bomb, but the scale and potential of these isn't well known. From what I could gather, they consist of a metal cylinder surrounded by a coil of wire. The cylinder is filled with an explosive with a sturdy lining surrounding the device. And then to provide it with energy, there's a bank of capacitors powering up the wires. In order to activate these, a switch connects the capacitors to the wires, generating a magnetic field. After this, a fuse mechanism ignites the explosive material and an explosion travels as a wave through the cylinder. As the explosion travels through the cylinder, the cylinder comes in contact with the wiring. This creates a short circuit that cuts off the wire from the power supply. The short circuit moving down a cylinder compresses the magnetic field, which generates an intense electromagnetic burst. In theory, this whole system could be placed into the shaft of an arrow. The only issue with this system is that the produced EMP would be much smaller, and it would take a lot of trial and error in order to figure out how large the arrow would need to be in order to deliver a strong enough EMP to disable whatever it's targeting. But of course, not all of Hawkeye's arrows are purely non-lethal, with incendiary and burst shot arrows being far more combative than anything we've discussed previously. Let's go back to the first Avengers movie and take a look at the explosive arrow. This has been used throughout the MCU to blow up helicarriers, Chitauri chariots and Ultron sentries. But these aren't exclusive to the MCU with the comics saying that they explode thanks to the presence of plastic explosive. But what is plastic explosive and would it be safe to fire an arrow containing it? Plastic explosives are a popular go-to in media with C4 being featured everywhere from Doctor Who to The Simpsons. C4, or Composition 4, is only one variety of plastic bonded explosives, and is made by combining plastic binder material with explosive chemicals. The plastic binder has two main roles. Primarily, it coats the explosive materials, making them less sensitive to shock and heat. This would make it more attractive to Hawkeye, who would want his explosive arrows to reach the target before blowing up. The second role is to make the explosive material more malleable being able to mould it into different shapes in order to change the direction of the explosion. This means that the material can be moulded to keep it aerodynamic enough for use in an arrow. And once we have these explosive arrows, they're triggered, at least in the MCU, directly from Hawkeye's bow. You see, plastic explosive won't go off with a match. If you tried that, the C4 would just burn like a lump of wood. In reality, you need a much larger source of energy, such as a blasting cap, to shock the plastic explosive into exploding. Detonators normally do this by setting off a brief charge to a small volume of explosive material that provides the energy needed to trigger off the rest of the explosive material in the C4. 
The most important part is that Hawkeye wouldn't even need that much plastic explosive in order to deal damage. Only half a kilogram of plastic explosive, for example, is needed to demolish a truck. So there we go. Just a small sample of the science involved in Hawkeye's trick arrows, and I'm sure there will only be more as the series goes on. If I had to choose whether I preferred the more grounded arrows of the MCU or the wider variety of the comics, I'll always have to go for the wider variety of trick arrows that the non-reality of the comics can offer. But despite that, I still love how much effort Marvel put into designing Hawkeye's trick arrows to be a bit more grounded and more realistic. And keep in mind, I wrote this after watching only the first two episodes of Hawkeye, so there's every likelihood that more interesting arrows seen in the comics could appear in the show. Whilst I might be more of a fan of Marvel's cosmic and less grounded adventures, I still love watching the lower stake adventures like those shown in Hawkeye, and I can't wait to see how it develops over the next month. As always, if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help combat the ever-changing and frustrating YouTube algorithm, then make sure you share the video to help my channel grow. If you have any scientific subject or topic that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please tell me in the comments down below. As well as that, follow me on Twitter to get updates on the latest science of videos, and join my Discord for chats about science, gaming and more. But until then, this has been the Science of Hawkeye. I'll see you next time.